So before I pray, I want you to pray. I want you to, to ask God to give you everything you need to hear this morning. I think about this. You know, people eat chicken different. I do. You know, it, I'm one of those people, you know, some people fry their chicken different. Some of, you know, you have a little, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like all of it's not the same color. And some of the meat that's not the same color, I don't eat it. But it's some people that can take a piece of chicken, put it in their mouth, and pull out a bone. They get everything. They get all the meat, they get all the skin, gristle. Everything is protein. So what I want you to do, I want you to be that person to get everything out the word of God today. I want you to pray and say, God, give me all the wisdom, all the knowledge, everything that you have for me in this word. I want you guys to take what's being preached today, put it in your spirit, take all of me. And when somebody say, how's church, you showed them the bone. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for joining the church. Thank you for this time, God. I decrease as you increase. Speak through me, Father. Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is good ground to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We come against the devil now. Satan, you have no place, no lot. We come against every distraction. We plead the blood of Jesus against it now. Only the word of God have reign, control in this setting. God, I pray over all the minds that they won't be distracted, that they can focus on you. Let them see you and none of me. And God, we thank you for the victory now. Their hearts will be transformed. Minds will be renewed. Victory shall be ours in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. First, I want to thank Pastor Eric and Mary, J for, Mary Jo for just, Mary J, that sounds like a, a, a rap name. Mary, thank Pastor Eric and Mary Jo for just being awesome shepherds that give, have given us a place to know that it's okay for us not to be okay all the time. Amen. That we don't have to come in here and fake and just be fake and just, sometimes life will slap you in the face and we know that we need the word of God. Amen, so this epic journey that we're about to go on and the Bible is, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, I love stories in the Bible. I, you know, everything from Genesis to Revelations. Some people go to sleep on Lamentations because some of us still don't know what it's about, but it's okay. You just got to stay here with us while we're going through this word. And, you know, Revel I can't wait to get to Revelations. I cannot wait because I... I think we should just play a prank on people who come to church late. I think, you know, you know how some people are come to church and, and miss worship, like, I don't want to, I'm going to just go when the word starts. So what we should do is when the week while we're preaching in Revelations, everybody just leave their cars, we go in the annex, and we just have a whole bunch of clothes on the chairs. <laughs> And, and I want to get Pastor Eric to do like a loop. Hey, Journey Church, this is Pastor Eric. And if you're seeing this video, you got left behind. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, people will be like, oh, my God. They'll be panicking. It, it'll just be crazy. And then you'll hear somebody be like, Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. And then Pastor Eric just adds to go on. And if you're praying now, it's too late. And like, I mean, it's so much fun stuff we can do with this Bible. I think that will be like the prank of all pranks. But I, 
I just haven't figured out how we're going to do it in kids' church. Now, when I get that, that's going to be on. So this, is going, this, this journey in the Word of God is going to be super, super, super good. And I can't wait to hear how we as a church go through the Word. And you know what the best part about this is that the kids are going to be hearing the same stories we hear. And as a family, that's going to be great for the families of Journey Church because, you know, Pastor Kevin, he, he teaches a certain way. So, like, I'm going to ask my son, and hopefully one day I'll say, son, what was church about? Well, Pastor Kevin said, Moses threw down a stick and it turned into a snake. So, I think that'll be an in- interesting conversation. And I think the whole story of Jesus, it's just going to be a beautiful time in Journey Church. So don't get turned off when we're like, we're going through the Bible in a year. No, no, no. We get to go through the Bible together in the whole year. So God is good. Amen. God is so good. I have some advice about the word today. And I'm going to give you two, two scriptures that we're going to lay a foundation for the word, and I want you to really gravitate, hold on, and dig in as we go through this message. The first one is found in James. James says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. A lot of times we'll come to church, we'll clap, we'll lift our hands, we'll say, ooh, God was so good, yes, and we'll go home and forget everything we heard. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. We need to take notes. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. We need to take notes because we know we can't remember everything. How many times you lost your keys this week? We lose our keys, we lose our phones, we lose, if, if our children didn't look like us, they would still be in Target. <laughs> the only reason you know, because they look like, oh, that's my face. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> the next scripture is in Luke. He replied, bless rather of those who hear the word of God and do what? Obey, Obey it. We don't need to just hear the word. We need to obey the word. We don't need to just hear the word. We need to obey the word. Why? Because Jesus said it's a blessing. You are blessed when you obey the word because the word has everything you need. Amen. So what will we learn through this whole year? We're going to learn a lot. What are we going to learn? We're going to learn the love story between the creator and the story of Jesus. I love a good love story. Ladies do too. The Notebook, Sleepless in Seattle, When Harry Met Sally, Terminator 2, (laughs) Toy Story. Um, Toy Story, yeah. It's like Andy loved his toy. It's toy stories of love. Never mind. And the story of Jesus. But it's no better love story than the love of the creator. How this creator stuck his hand in clay and dirt, breathed his own breath to bring this creation alive, gave him the entire world, gave him food, gave him animals to name and have dominion. He gave him everything. And he said, I love you. All of this is yours. All of this is yours. And in the love story, the deceiver came, and then the creation, sin, turned his back on the creator. But the love story didn't end. He was so in love. Hey, now, that's good. (laughs) He was so in love that he developed a plan 
to get his love back. He said, I love him so much, I'm going to go down. And I'm going to die for him. And I'm going to rise for him with all power. And when I rise with that power, I'm going to give him power to overcome so we can be back in our loving relationship. So this whole year, we're going to be telling such a beautiful love story. And you're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy it together. And it's going to be good. So what are we going to learn besides this love story? The keys to life. We're going to get direction. You're going to get direction for your life. Just like on the 20s and 30s service this Thursday, direction is going to come. Psalm says this, your word, somebody say word. word. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We're going to learn our direction. The Bible says that God, God says, I have, my intentions for you are good. Sometimes we don't feel like we're walking in the right direction, but you know what? When we get into this Bible, when you stay in this word, you're going to see your life in such a way, and God is going to shed life where you should go, who you should be with, where you should be in his perfect will. The next thing we're going to learn is this. You will learn about yourself through the eyes of God. Because some of us need to know. Because we've lived a life, some of us had parents to call us stupid. People have told us you're never going to be nothing. We've been in past relationships where we've been treated so bad and, and our self-esteem has went so below in the ground and the word of God will tell you that all of those things are live, lies because you are beautifully and wonderfully made. The Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. How can I be dumb, stupid, worthless, no one loves me when the greatest being in the universe lives inside of me? How can I be depressed when the only thing I have to do is get on my knees and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and things start to change? The Bible says you are the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. You walk in the finished work of Christ. The finished work. When Jesus said it is finished, everything you need, you have. Everything, 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 everything. What else, what else, what else, what else? Everything, everything. The beauty of God's word and its power to give you life. You're going to learn about that. We, we, we're going to learn how much power this word of God is. Matthew says this. And Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. But on how many words? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Having the word of God isn't an option. It's not optional. We don't have excuses anymore. You know, sometimes we don't want to come to church. We're like, oh, I'm tired. Yeah, Jesus was tired too when they was beating him all night. Oh, I'm sleepy. Yeah, I'm sure he got sleepy when all of his blood started dripping from his body. I don't feel like it. He didn't even feel like going to the cross. But he did. But he did. He said, it is written, you shall not live by bread alone. The word isn't optional. The word isn't optional. You need this to live. I told one of the youth, I, he, he was asking me about reading the Bible and how should he do it. And if, if he do, do a message, should he read? I was like, you don't, I don't read the Bible to preach. I read the Bible to live. I read the Bible so I know how to live this life because the world is dark. It's dark people. It's people who don't want anything for my good but evil. And I have to have this word to navigate and know how to deal with people, how to forgive, how to let things go like the girl from Frozen. <laughs> the Bible teaches us. We must know what the word says. 
if Jesus was in the garden being tempted by the devil. How many of you guys was tempted this week? Like, tempted today, tempted last week. Like, it was some real stuff. Like, you know what? Woo! Almost had to tell them how I used to tell them. Ooh, when they cut me off on blending. Lord have mercy upon their soul because if I would have got closer to them, I would have rolled that window down. And hallelujah. <laughs> if Jesus was tempted in that garden and every word that came out of his mouth was, it is written. It is written. It is written. If Jesus had a it is written to back the devil up, guess what you got to have? Uh, it is written. We must know the, what the word says so we can combat every plan of the enemy. You got to know what the Bible says for yourself because you might not be able to get to Pastor Eric, Pastor Don, Pastor Adam. You cannot get on Facebook and direct message Mary Jo. Mary Jo, I need you to pray for me. No, what does the Bible say? Your phone is over there. When, the, when life hits you, with a 9.2 Richter scale of trouble, you're not going to be able to call anybody. You need to call on Jesus. You need to know the word. You need to know it, what it is written. One of our dear, dear members had an accident. It was, it was tragic. But he knew the word. He knew the word. And they said when the ambulance came, he was preaching to him. He was saying what well, God said right here. God said this. Oh, if you ain't saved, you better know God because it is written, it is written, it is written. He thought he, he didn't know if he was coming or going, if he was going to heaven or what. But only thing he knew when life happened, he pulled that word out. When you get cut, you should bleed scriptures. When they turn, if somebody grabs you and turn you upside down and start shaking, Romans need to fall out. Corinthians need to fall out. Revelations need to fall out. We must know what this word says because the devil is cunning. He's slick. He's slithery. He know exactly what you like. He know how they look, how you like. He know what type of walk you like. He know the sound, fellas, of heels walking by. Clank, 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 clank. And if you don't know that word, he'll do you like he did Eve. He'll slip one word in to make it sound like it's something totally different. Well, I don't have to go to church. The words say we're under grace. Oh, you don't know your Bible. It said forsake not yourself to assemble. But if you didn't know the word, you'll be like, oh, that's right. I am under grace. I don't need to go to church. No, 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 no. You need to know this word. Because if you know the word, you'll obey the word. You should expect to learn how to live out the word and not just know it. We have to know how to live this thing. We'll hear the, a word. That's why we have pastors to break it down. That's why we have small groups to help us dissect everything that the word says. That's why you got to get in a small group. Amen, Pastor Brinson. That was yes. Yes. That. Pastor Brinson, you know, high five, bless the name of God. How can you grow without having other people to help you break down? Well, I hear the Lord by myself, and that's why I don't go to church now. Well, that's why you got a demon sitting next to you on your uh, bedside telling you to stay home. Oh, you know, nobody want to say that. That's okay. James 1 says this. Don't merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. It's like yesterday. Donovan Darius was here and he lit the place up. It was so good. The men were inspired. They was full of bacon and eggs. And I seen a brother come with his plate so stacked. I took a picture of him. He said, let me throw all this syrup on him. He started going to town. There he is. I see you. He started going to town. 
And then that brother came in talking about how he lit up one of the Steelers. Hey now, Jesus. Hey now, Jesus. Hey now. Light them Steelers up. And I asked myself, I said, man, they, they clapped, they roared. They were inspired, they smiled. But how many are going to apply this word? Sometimes we come to church, we'll clap, we'll, we'll, we'll say, this was so good, we'll, we'll leave happy. But we didn't get anything. Don't deceive yourself. Do what the word says. And again, Proverbs Psalm says this, how can a young person stay pure? How? How? But by living according to your word. You got temptation in your life? The word got an answer for you. You got an addiction in your life? The word got an answer for you. You depressed? The word got an answer for you. You got anxiety? The word got an answer. You have rough relationships? You don't know how to look at yourself in confidence and know you are loved? The word has an answer for you. Your heart can stay pure if it stays in the word. We don't know how to, we, we know we should forgive, but sometimes we just don't know how. The word teaches us how to live this thing out. The word teaches us how to forgive. How can we come from a place of darkness into God's marvelous light without reading the word? The Bible says our minds are renewed by the word of God. Our minds need to be renewed. You need to see yourself how God sees you. You need to see your children how God sees your children. The Bible says that children are a blessing from the Lord. If they're a blessing, then why we keep cussing them out? Oh, oh. that was good right there. No, 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 you ain't got to say it right there because we got to treat God's gift right. And if your spouse, come on, if your spouse is a blessing, you better treat that spouse right. Because God is watching. You know why? That's just not your spouse. That's God's son. That's God's daughter. You're, you, got, you're, you got God's property living with you. And one day you go, God is going to look at you like, how did you treat my son? Who is your son? The one you married. Oh. And Jesus is going to be like, well, you're like, see what happened was... <laughs> No, I know what happened. I gave you the word and you didn't obey it. So I got four things, five things to help us live this word. Live this word. The first thing is this. Be a devoted reader of the word. Devote yourself to reading this word. Well, it's boring. No, 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 no. Just like in the beginning, sometimes you got to pray for God to unlock what the Bible is saying. Sometimes you got to pray that the Holy Spirit reveal what certain things mean. And when, he, and when it clicks, I'm telling you, it's one of the best feelings in the world. You're like, oh my God, I finally get that. Man, that's crazy. Then you want to call people and preach to them. Well, you know what the Bible says? <laughs> So after they hang up on you, just go back to reading. Next, practice what you read. Practice what you read. I mean, all of it, practice it. I mean, if Jesus walked on water, find you a pool. I did not say the St. John River, I said a pool. If the Bible says greater work shall you do, are you going to believe it or not? Somebody going to believe it. Find you a kiddie pool in, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Hey, it's in the book. If Jesus said greater work shall you do, he did it. Hey, you can do how many things through Christ? So can you walk on water? Through Christ who strengthens you, right? Somebody better find a kiddie pool. <laughs> find you, listen, 
Don't go in the deep end. Find the kiddie pool where, you know, it's a, it's a small step down. You know, mustard faith first. Mustard faith. Mustard faith. Practice what you read. And as your faith increase, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. You, you practice this word. You live this word. And one day you'll walk in the hospital and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and you'll start seeing things happen. One day you'll walk in your job and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your co-worker start acting correctly. You, be, you don't even know. You say in, in, in Thanksgiving when you walk in that house and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you'll get testimonies that people in your family that you've been praying for for years have been getting saved. You walk places and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, when you practice what this word says, it works. The word works. The Bible says God watches over his word to perform. He watches over. He, you're not, we're not going to make a lie out of God. He said, I'm going to watch this stuff and I'm going to make it do what it do. What's next? Don't ignore God's correction. To live this word, when you read something that you know you need to change, change it. The Bible says that God chastens those who he loves. I told my son, I said, son, look, I got one rule. I got one rule. Listen and obey. And if you do, you won't have a warm butt day in your life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen and obey. And he, he does it. He does such a swell job. And when he doesn't, you know, I chasing those who I love. Warm butt day. Don't ignore God's correction. When God is showing you your shortcoming, he's showing you to increase you. He's showing you so you can look more like him. He wants to look down from his throne on whatever street you live on, in your house, and see his reflection. He wants to see himself in you. Don't ignore God's correction. Embrace it. And tell God, thank you, God, thank you that I see myself in your word because you know all this is good for me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're not, and don't, let, let me help. Can I help somebody? Somebody say, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> don't read the Bible to tear people down. Don't read the Bible like, oh, oh, that's Susie right there. Oh, I can't wait to get on social media and blast her. The Bible says... You, Susie. But the Bible also said it's a two-edged sword. As soon as you try to cut her, it's cutting you. Next, let the word of God invade all of you. Anybody ever dropped a phone in water? And you picked it up and you opened it and it was water by the battery, water in the speaker, water everywhere. And you knew... You had to renew your contract, and that was $500. You was like, Lord Jesus, help me now. Send a raven or somebody with another phone that works. But that water got in every crevice, every crack. The word of God need to permeate your soul permeate your life you need to in, we need to invite God and let him invade every area of our lives every area everything that we're trying to hide from God we need to uncover it we need to let God in how can we be whole and we and we tell God no God I, I, I want to keep this sinful part of myself let me just stay right here no 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 let God invade everything if you got an addiction let God invade it if you got a smoking issue, let God invade it. If you got an issue where you don't know how to treat people and you're just the meanest rattlesnake in the office, let God's word invade you. Let him in. Let God in to invade every part of you. Don't let any part of you be untouched by the word. Don't let any part of you be untouched by the word of God because the word of God is the only thing that's going to make you whole. And the last thing is this. The word is a medicine. 
the Bible says that the word of God is health to your navel. The word is a medicine. Are you sick? The word is a medicine. Are you having trouble in your mind? The word is a medicine. Are you having trouble in any part of your body? The word is a medicine. What is greater than the word of God? Nothing. It says everything has to obey the word of Jesus. The name of Jesus. It said demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Cancer can't withstand the power of Jesus. AIDS can't withstand the power of Jesus. Hatred can't withstand the power of Jesus. Nothing is greater than the word of God. The word can be trusted, the word can be tested, and the word can be lived. The more you stay in this word, the more it'll be easy for you to live it out. The more you keep coming to church, the more, the more you'll understand. And the more you understand, the more you can live. You can trust this word. I trust the word of God more than a bulletproof vest. Because one day they'll make bullets to go through a bulletproof vest. You can't go through the word of God. Because it's going to take me from the natural to the spirit. It's going to keep me. It's going to shield me. The word of God is a shield. The Bible calls God a high fortress, a strong tower. He's the greatest. Said he could be tested. You ever been, you ever been in a place in your life that you don't know what was going to happen? You called on the name of Jesus and he came and he delivered. He set you free. The word can be tested. Nothing in your life. Is more powerful than the word of God. So we're going to learn the love story between the creator. We're going to get keys to life, direction. You're going to learn about yourself through the eyes of God. We're going to learn about the beauty of God's word and the power to give us life. We must know what the word says and how to live the word and not just know it. We're going to be devoted readers. We're going to practice what we read. We won't ignore God's correction. And we're going to let the word invade us. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet as we bring the service to a close. And if you bow your head and close your eyes, God touch Blake Borders right now in Jesus' name. Um, as the eyes are closed and heads are bowed, if you never receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, we have people who's coming to the front to pray with you. And if you know that Jesus was knocking on the heart, on the door of your heart, and you know this message was for you. Don't think about the people around you. Come to the altar. Let us pray with you. And if you're in a place where you know you need the Lord, you backslid, you, you, you're living a life that you know that's not pleasing to God, and you want to be back in right standing with God, I want you to come up too. And if you need a church, this is a good church. This is a great church. This is a loving church. And if you need a place to, to drink from the brook of God's word that's Bible-believing, that has power to transform, and you want to join this congregation, I'm going to ask you to come up to I gave you three things. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for joining the church. Thank you for... Not just the hearers, but the doers of this word. Help us, God, to live this word. Help us, God, to enjoy the beauty of the gospel. Lord, let your will be done in us, through us, around us. Protect us this week, God. Speak to us this week. Give us understanding when we go through this word. And God, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. 
In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Have a good day, Journey Church.